Infectious bursal disease is also known as Gomboro disease because it was first recognized in Gomboro, Delaware in 1962. It is caused by the infectious bursal disease virus, the sole member of the genus Aviburnavirus. It belongs in the family Bernaviridae. By meaning to, RNA referring to ribonucleic acid, and viridae meaning virus family. Oh, and avi here refers to avians. The infectious bursal disease virus is a non-enveloped virus that has two linear segments of double-stranded RNA. There are two serotypes. Serotype 1 causes disease in chickens only, whereas serotype 2 can infect chickens and turkeys, but do not cause clinical disease. Serotype 1 has three antigenic subgroups, classic, variant, and very virulent, with the following mortality rates. Pathophysiology The infectious bursal disease virus has a tropism for certain B lymphocytes in the bursa of Fabricius. The bursa of Fabricius is an organ unique to birds. It is a sac-like structure located dorsal to the cloaca. Hence, it is also called the cloacal bursa. Histologically, it looks like this. Folds of pseudostratified columnar epithelium project into the lumen. Within these folds are lymphoid follicles, with a dark cortex and light medulla. This is where we can find maturing B cells. It is a primary lymphoid organ that serves as the site of maturation of B cells in birds. The B in B cells refers to bursa, after all, as opposed to the T in T cells for the thymus. B cells play important roles in humoral immunity, that is, immunity involving antibodies. The infectious bursal disease virus likes to infect very specific kinds of B cells. These are B lymphoblasts that do not bear any immunoglobulins yet, and B lymphocytes bearing immunoglobulin M. Interestingly, the virus does not replicate in stem cells and peripheral B cells. This tropism for B lymphocytes at a very specific stage of differentiation results in age-dependent clinical disease. Chicks infected before three weeks of age may simply develop a subclinical infection because they only have a few immature B cells and still possess maternal antibodies to protect them. Even though this is a subclinical infection, production losses can still result. The chicks may become poor responders to vaccination and have increased susceptibility to infections that are normally harmless. The subclinical infection simply means that the chicks do not manifest the clinical signs of IBD during the course of the disease. The bursa of Fabricius may simply atrophy without significant inflammation. At 3 to 6 weeks of age, however, is when IBD V infection is most severe. This is when there are many immature B cells in the cloacal bursa. The bursa has reached its maximum size, and maternal antibodies have waned. After a 2 to 4 day incubation period, chickens may show signs of prostration, incoordination, anorexia, watery diarrhea leading to soiled vent feathers, vent picking, and inflammation of the cloaca. The bursa of Fabricius can become up to five times bigger from the inflammation, appearing edematous, hyperemic, and yellowish. B lymphocyte destruction leads to the collapse of the normal follicular structure of the bursa, and multiple foci of necrosis throughout the bursa. This has been called a viral bursectomy, because just like in surgically bursectomized birds, there is a significant decrease in the chicken's ability to produce antibodies. This also results in poor response to vaccination, 
recurrent opportunistic infections, and more severe illness when infected with common diseases. Very virulent strains may also affect the thymus, spleen, and bone marrow. Chickens infected after six weeks of age already have a physiologically atrophied bursa of Fabricius. This primary lymphoid organ atrophies with age, just like the thymus. And most of their B cells have already matured. So they don't really develop clinical signs of the disease. Diagnosis. Necropsy is usually done in the field, but diagnosis is confirmed by electron microscopy of bursal specimens, virus isolation in embryonating eggs or cell cultures, or RT-PCR. Control. There is no treatment for infectious bursal disease. Being a non-enveloped virus, it is extremely stable in the environment. It can be inactivated with phenolic-based compounds, iodine complexes, formalin, and chloramine compounds. But take note that these must be used at the correct concentration with sufficient contact time. Vaccination is the best method to prevention. Many vaccines against IBD are available, such as live vaccines, vectored vaccines, and immune complex vaccines, some of which can be administered in ovo, or while the chick is still in the egg. To recap, infectious bursal disease, or gumboro disease, is caused by the infectious bursal disease virus, a non-enveloped, double-stranded RNA avibernavirus of the family Bernaviridae. It has a tropism for B lymphocytes at a specific stage of maturation in the bursa of Fabricius. Clinical disease is age-dependent. Necropsy is commonly done in the field, but diagnosis can be confirmed through electron microscopy, virus isolation, and RT-PCR. The infectious bursal disease virus is very stable in the environment and is best prevented through vaccination.